And like, you ever, you ever like when you're super tired and you're just like, you know, the, the wheels turn, but like slowly, like there's kind of cogs. And so I'm sitting there going like, and I'm starting to read it. And I'm like, Kim Hayward doesn't play on the Jaguars. <laughs> Yeah. The internal wheels and synapses of Barry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Frightening like, to think about what's going on in there. Word. Yeah, I know. John Nixon. <laughs> yeah. And the issue is, is like it's all gummed up with popcorn. Yesterday was free popcorn day yep. here at NBC. Uh, so classic Wednesday. Yeah. So anyway, it's all gummed up with. Think of your brain swimming around in a pool of diet soda as uh, well. It's probably. probably. You've had so much over the journey that it makes its way upwards. Uh, I would think so. Place. Yeah. It's a mistake. Anyway. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Friday and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Diet Soda Brand Matthew Berry. And Jay just, Crouch. So listen, so that was probably my worst moment yesterday on the show. Like I'd stayed up all night. Yeah, so we ran writing. I, right. I stayed up all night writing Love Hate. I was exhausted. If you read my Love Hate column on rotoworld.com, of course, 100% for him, a company man, you'll see like it's heavily researched. By the way, it, had, it didn't post till late last night because it had to be legally vetted. Every single thing, because there's a lot of anti-Dan Snyder stuff in there. And he can be litigious. Um, and so uh, literally, like, we had to vet every... Anyway, it had to go through NBC Legal. My point is, my point is, is so um, I finally do all that, right? And it, it, so it's highly recommended. I think you'll really enjoy the column. Uh, you guys should read this. But, like, so I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And so I'm like, what happened to brain fart, right? I, that was my bad moment. Sure. And then, and then you go and reread the love hate. You read the love hate, and I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. I had Geno Smith and Zach Charbonnet on my hate list. We did the love hate show yesterday. We mentioned both guys on the hate list as well. And so, so anyway, I I just wanted I just wanted to make that statement. I put out this tweet last night. I put Geno Smith and Zach Charbonnet on my hate list this week. I will be taking no further questions. Please respect my family's privacy at this difficult time. And what, the, what does the show do? The show throws me under the bus yeah. by showing my worst <laughs> moment from yesterday. And then here you go. And I was Googling just uh, some examples of po apology statements. Yeah. Just, you know, some good professional apology statements. Cowboys could have used Cam Haywood on their defense last night. Right. Maybe you could have put him on their defense instead. Maybe they could have stopped Zach Charbonneau. Just a bad 24 hours for me is yeah. what Your it is, publicist guys. working overtime. Oh, God. Yeah. I, you know, I, right. I, I really should hire a publicist is what I, actually what I need to. I need, a crisis, I need a crisis management publicist is what I need, you know. Get, you know who doesn't need a publicist though, Matthew? Who's that? Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott does not. do the talking. Yeah, he lets his, him and, him and uh, DK Metcalf, there are a lot of people that, um, that absolutely need uh, that. But real quickly, before we, before we get into Dak and DK, just to finish up this apology. So I just want to take a moment. So I was Googling that. I was Googling like professional, uh, professional apologies right there in terms of. And, and so uh, while we'll be taking no more questions, uh, I will uh, you know, officially apologize to everyone uh, out there that read Love Hate yesterday, everyone that watched the show yesterday, that sat Geno Smith and or Zach Charbonnet based on my advice. I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, apologize to you and specifically to our friend Kira. Kira drinks free today at the happy hour. And you're like, who's Kira? And I'll tell you. So Kira's an old friend of mine. She used to work at ESPN. We both worked there back in the day. And she's also very good friends with our friend, Danielle. Danielle is a suit here at NBC. <laughs> she's a she's a muckety muck. She's one of the she's one of the big shots here. But we like Danielle because she's not a suit suit. She's yes. like a good suit. Yes. But anyway, so we really like Danielle. And so the three of us, the three of us and Danielle and Kira were on a text chain last night. This is finally a text chain that I got invited to, um, probably because it got started by Danielle. And, and not YouTube never be bastards. invited again, by right. the way. Yeah, YouTube <laughs> bastards. Yeah, exactly, because you guys keep me out of the text chain. But Danielle, because we like Danielle, Danielle puts me in the text chain, which ultimately turned out to be a mistake, because she's like, hey, Kira has a question. And so Kira wanted to know, she's trying to decide between Minshew and Geno Smith, <laughs> yeah. where should I go? And she's like, and she literally says, I'm thinking, Minshew's gotten me nothing the last couple of weeks. I'm sick of Minshew. I think I want to go Geno Smith. And the three of us, individually, collectively, all said, no, Kira, do not do this. We all think you should start Minshew and not Geno Smith. Well, and pressure Gardner Minshew. 
Yeah, no the, pressure at all. The good news is that there's a 0% chance Gardner Minshew is going to throw for 334 yards and three touchdowns. Right. So there's absolutely no way oh, it can yeah. work out. So anyway, uh, uh, the text chain last night is completely blowing. Finally, I'm in a text chain with Jay and, and Connor, and it's all just about, you know, it's just MFing us because, <laughs> rightfully so, because... She was not pleased. Well, why wouldn't she be? Obviously so. so, because Geno Smith keeps throwing dime after dime, <laughs> touchdown after touchdown, racking up fantasy points on Kira's bench. And so, anyway, I apologize to Kira and to every single person that went through that last night. It was just a bad day at the office for your boys here. Um, I'll be taking no further questions okay. at this time. <laughs> okay. Tough scene. Tough scene. Well, I guess, you know what my favorite part is? But I just want to own it. Like, like whatever. If, if, you, if you do stuff like you victory lap Tank Dell or whatever, then you sure. have to, like, you, you have to say, Gino. like, listen, Get I'm raising my me. hand and just say, like, that was a bad effing call by me. Yeah. My favorite part is when Kira started to text Gino's stats throughout <laughs> the night. Like, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm watching yeah, it. I'm yeah, watching yeah, it throw watching these it. bomb touchdowns to DK Metcalf. Like live tweeting yeah. a game. Yeah. Man, we'll have some good news. But just to us. Just yeah. to the three of us and, uh, and, uh, and poor Danielle. The positives are Kira is in first place yes. in her league. So she'll be, I think she'll be okay. And the good news is uh, Danny Carter will be joining us at the end of this segment. Just to really? kind of cheer you up. <laughs> yeah, yes. that'll be great. It's yeah. Good news or news? Yeah, no, it's good news. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just yeah. to watch, uh, you know. It's see fantastic. What, see how Danny yeah. shows up, what shirt he's wearing. What yeah. he has to say, how he exactly. pissed Matthew yeah, off it's, further. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm not okay. like, it's not like I recommended uh, starting Deontay Johnson. Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, it could be worse. Denny. All right, before we get to Denny, let's get into the Roto World player news, and we will stay right there with Cowboys and Seahawks. If you didn't know, Geno Smith had 334 yards, three touchdowns. As Jay said, he also had the rushing touchdown as well. Big night for Geno Smith, aided by DK Metcalf. We had 134 yards and three touchdowns, Jay. Just a monster night for this duo. Yeah, it was incredible. DK hit the fastest speed that anyone has hit this season on that touchdown run, and it certainly looked like it. Yeah, Poor Deron right Bland. Well, uh, what a, that's just a perfect I'll... throw as well. I'm not sure there's that much Bland could have done about that one. There was some stuff that he could have done about all the other times he got burned. Uh, so yeah, Deron Bland's not going to win Defensive Player of the Year this season anymore. But the Seahawks, and this is going to get a little bit lost in the wash just because of Dallas winning the game and Dak and Dak MVP, which we'll get into. But I thought Geno Smith was magnificent yeah, in this he game. This, this was, I think this is the best game he's played ever in the NFL. And he, it's just kind of going to get washed over because they lost. Yeah, he, he, he absolutely played well. Give credit where credit is due. The other thing about Bland, and we've talked about this, like Bland gambles a lot. Oh, like yeah. they put, they, they play a lot of man and they just, they, he gambles a lot. And sometimes the gambles pay off and he gets a pick six, right? And it's one of the reasons why he's got this crazy pick six record. But there's also times where stuff like that happens, where DK, where he just, he gambles and he loses. And then the DK Metcalfs of the world are off to the races. Yeah. And, and I think that the, the, the takeaway of that, other than just like, hey, hopefully you start DK Metcalf, um, is that. Uh, that you, if you have players on reasonably good offenses facing the Cowboys, I, I don't I think there's this this thought oh the Cowboys like you know they're this amazing defense because Michael Parsons I, right and, yeah Michael yeah. Parsons and Lawrence we did end and the, the game, whole thing but, right yeah yeah but but I think you I don't think you need to be scared of the Cowboys defense as a matchup when it comes to fantasy no particularly I mean they have games upcoming against uh, I think the next three weeks are against AJ Brown. And then Stefan Diggs, and then Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, and then after that it's Amon Ra St. Brown. Like yeah. those guys just start them as normal because right. they showed last night that you can pick on Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis in the slot. It's not like yeah. he's a great weapon. Stefan Gilmore is fine. He's good. He's a good cornerback, but he's not Stefan Gilmore Defensive Player of the Year anymore. And so it's all about just can Parsons and Lawrence get home? Because if they don't get home, then all of a sudden those guys right. can create separation. Yeah, and back to your point, Jay, about maybe Gino's best game we've ever seen from him. What does today look like if Tyler Lockett catches that ball yeah. at the end? Too? That was a perfect anticipation throw. So even some of Geno's incompletions were absolute brilliant. Uh, monster night for Geno Smith with 30 fantasy points. And we'll see if anybody can top that going into the weekend, Matthew. Yeah, look, and that's the other thing is, this is like, we're going to go through this game, but just a monster fantasy game on both sides of the ball. Just awesome fantasy stats. But, like, you get in there and there's a chance that you're heading into Sunday morning. We'll talk a lot about this more fantasy football pregame on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern on Peacock and the NFL and NBC YouTube channel, my company man, where you may be down big heading into the weekend or you may be up big and that should influence how you set your lineup. Like, you know, if you're up big, if you had, if you had Metcalf and Lamb or something like which you easily could have, like, and you're up um, going in the league, like you can be more safe and more floor plays. If you're down by a lot, like I'm in, I'm in one league. I'm in one league where uh, it's it's me and a bunch of guys that we used to we all work together at ESPN. It's all my ESPN buddies. 
B. Rubes is in it. Stupid B. Rubes is in this game. <laughs> is Damien in this? Damien's in it. Producer Damien. By the way, Damien, producer Damien uh, put up 90 in this league because he's got like Metcalf oh, no. and Dak Prescott. And uh, I think he's got either Pollard or something. But I looked at it. He's like, he's literally up 97 <laughs> to nothing. He had three guys in this game. Um, and I'm playing like, and I'm in, I'm in fourth place, but I've had some injuries. Um, I'm like second in points. I've had some bad w- scheduling luck. Uh, but anyway, I, n- I need to win to keep only four teams to make the playoffs in, the, in this league. A- and I'm playing against the second to worst team in the league who had DK Metcalf. So I'm down 37 nothing to this crappy team that's been brutal all year, you know, and I'm still projected to win, but, like, it's going to be a lot tighter than it should be, and I'm annoyed about that. I'm annoyed. But anyway, so the point is, the, the point is, uh, and by, Brian Rubin, by the way, don't get me started on B. Rubes. Brian, former producer Brian Rubin, now with the NHL. Uh, and he used to work with us at ESPN. Yeah, he got B- up out of here. Oh, um, B. Rubes, B. Yeah, Rubes team is entirely oh, like Connor McDavid. B. Rubes team is entirely love hate, which is basically <laughs> all of like me and Damien's players. Like okay. he's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like all he just and he's he picked one spot ahead of me and he just he screwed me the entire draft. He's, he's in first place. He's like seventeen yeah, and one in this league because we play two games a week. It's a whole thing. Anyway, it, B. Rubes. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Back to DK Metcalf. He was uh, good. Yeah, he was cool. Well, for as good as <laughs> for as good as the I'll just, the, the point of that uh, ran, tangent <laughs> okay, where aside, were we going? Yeah, there was a yeah, point. Yeah, I have no idea. Which is just no that I that I do actually think that the the moves you make free agent wise yeah. and lineup wise need to be influenced by this game because there were such massive point totals and whether you are up big or down big, I think there's a very good chance that you have a situation that you normally wouldn't have heading into Sunday morning, and I think you can start thinking through that. Yeah, so if you're down uh, big going into the weekend and look, this guy's injured, but you would look for the Rashid Shaheeds of the world, some guys yeah. who can go for 120 right. yards and a touchdown, right. as opposed to playing your more your floor plays, your Chris Godwin types. Yeah, A.T. Perry. Yeah. A.T. Perry could have a, no, seriously, yeah. A.T. Have Perry could have a monster yeah. game. He could also be two for 24. Yep. Yep. But that's a guy, like you want those wide, if you're down big, you want those wide variance players versus, you know, here's a guy that's just going to get you, you know, five for 50. Yep. Every good, single good week. Good relevant example from you, Matthew, as opposed to my uh, example of player who's not going to play Rashid. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Very good. One but more it inspired no, the ATP. Because yeah, when you said Asian right. Rashid, I was like, oh, let me think about somebody in that same game, yeah. but that will play. Yes. Yes. Well played. One more note on the Seattle passing game. Nice night for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Good call, Jay. You yes. went over his receiving total, which was in the low 40s. He ends up with 62 yards. So Jay's best bet hits on JSN, um, who is starting to really – Turn the corner here, guys. Lot while Lockett has been trending downward the last couple weeks, things are looking good for the first round rookie. Since their week five bye, he's averaging over 10 fantasy points per game. He's averaging basically 50 yards a game. I like the fact that he got 11 targets in this one and uh, almost a 30% target share. It was his second highest in a game so far this year. By the way, had like a 35 yard touchdown called back, yep. like it, which was the right call. Yep. They called it a touchdown on the field. It was, you know, the ball moved when he uh, when it hit the ground. But the fact of the matter is, is that's a bang bang play that, you know, in another, we all like JSN's talent. That easily could have been a touchdown. So his Nate could have been even bigger. Yep, and he's had 36 receiving yards at least in eight straight games. 11 targets, as you mentioned, that that's the highest target. Uh, number of his career, the previous high was seven. Just and he just looks more involved in the offense. He looks more comfortable out there, and the talent is really shining through. I think someone at the expense of Tyler Lockett a little bit, who didn't have his best night Mm-mm. last night. So JSN on a team that you'd expect is going to have to be throwing going forward, uh, particularly with their next two games, like San Francisco's next week. That's brutal uh, for everyone involved. But then Philadelphia after that, that's kind of a dream fantasy matchup because not a great pass defense and Seattle will be underdogs. Well, and by the way, specifically, like again, I think you can throw in the slot um, certainly against the Eagles, yeah. right? And then you then they're at Tennessee, home to Pittsburgh, at Arizona. So this kind of lines up either, I think the rest of the lineup, San Francisco being the one exception here, but they're going to have to throw against the Niners. And the, wide, the Niners have given up some, you know, a decent amount of wide receiver receptions, and they'll probably be focused on, on trying to stop Metcalf. So it, it's one of those things. It's the rest of the lineup are either, like, just good matchups overall or good matchup for the slot for the majority coming up. So I could certainly see JSN becoming, you know, wide receiver three with upside kind of uh, down the stretch here. And this is someone who didn't really play his final college season. So the fact that he's turning the corner in the second half of his rookie season makes a lot of sense. Good things ahead for JSN. Over in the Dallas passing game, we said it, big night for Geno, also a big night for Dak. Completes 29 of 41 passes, 299 yards, three touchdowns. He also had seven carries for 22 yards, big run at the end. 
Jay, I mean, Dak Prescott legitimately in the MVP conversation now. Yep, no, he is right there. And, I mean, he was magnificent again last night. He's just in such a zone at the moment. And what, to me, stands out, one, the accuracy, but just his mobility as well, these designed runs. We talked about in the preseason. That he kind of disappeared from Dak's game. But this is the, just the healthiest and the most spry that he's looked since he broke that ankle in such gruesome fashion. He looks like he is better than he's ever been. And in terms of the MVP, I mean... Like, Jalen Hurts is the favorite to win MVP right now. You know why Jalen Hurts is the favorite to win MVP? Because MVS dropped a pass and Gabe Davis wrong the he ran the wrong route. If those two plays go differently, right. Jalen Hurts... And Luke Schoonemaker's knee hits, you know, a nanosecond before the ball crosses the uh, goal line. Exactly. And I think, look, MVP is so tied to who gets the one seed and who has the most wins. I just think that is just such an antiquated way to look at this award. Let's focus on what the quarterbacks can actually control themselves. And Dak Prescott, the way he is playing right now, like he is he's first in the league in QBR, Hurts is seventh. He's second in the league in passer rating, Hurts is twelfth. EPA per play, Dak is second, Hurts is seventh. Uh, Hurts has 13 turnovers, Dak has six. Like, there's just no argument for Jalen Hurts outside of wins. And Hurts should get a lot of credit for how he's played in the clutch and he's having a good season. But the other thing too with Hurts is that, so in terms of uh, ex uh, expected points added, 17% of Hurts' value on the season has come from the tush push, which I think he should get credit for because he's a big part of why that play works. But so is Kelsey in the offensive line of the Eagles. Sure. So I think on merit, I mean... I'm higher on Brock Purdy the most. I would have Purdy and Dak as the two best MVP guys because they have the best stats. But uh, Dak is right there. And Dak, he will be the favorite in everyone's eyes if he beats Jalen Hurts on Sunday Night Football next week. It's gaining a lot of traction too. Dak yeah. was asked about it right after the game. And we got to hear from him on being in that MVP combo. No difference when, when they're hating me. Uh, and and, call it, and call in, calling for me to my position, honestly. I'm blessed. I'm super blessed, and you know I think about that each and each and every day that I wake up. I'm grateful for that opportunity to do that, and I go and attack the day that I understand nobody's opinion defines me, and um, that that's the great part about life, and that's the great opportunity that we all have. That people can say whatever they want, but but you know I have the pen, I have the paper, and I'm the one writing. So um, because I'm playing as well as I am now, doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. Doesn't mean I'm going to listen to them now. Uh, appreciate them. But I don't care about their opinions right now any more than I did when they said that, you know, when they're, when they're calling for my spot. So, first off, um, uh, everyone's opinions make me, for, you know, like he's like, no one's opinion. I'm the anti Dak Prescott. Uh, the other thing is, is Connor, we got to get you that jacket. I, yeah. love, that was, I, that, I love that jacket. That, uh, yeah. uh, he, looked, he looked great jacket. there. MVP jacket. Uh, I'll give you another case, I think, just a, a narrative based case for you on Dak, because I agree with you. I mean, like, He's played as well as any quarterback in the NFL over the last five, six weeks. Um, the Cowboy, if the Cowboys continue having the season they're having, and again, they're going to need they're going to need to beat Philadelphia. Yeah. That's a huge game, right? But if they do, and they end up the, with the one seed, right? Oh, they're going to want to honor this team somehow. This team is one of the elite teams in the NFL. And they're going to want to honor this team. I don't think there's any way McCarthy wins Coach of the Year. No, like the, no, cut, yeah, there's I no agree. like he's got he, a stench. He's got <laughs> right. The people people talent. think people think they're winning in spite of him. They'll <laughs> they'll give credit to Dan Quinn, whatever. Too much talent. Like there's, there's better stories. He, <laughs> there's better stories out there. He's not great with the media, McCarthy. The you know, it's just McCarthy's never winning Coach of the Year. So now you're like, okay, could, it's either MVP or Offensive Player of the Year for C.D. Lamb, right? My guy eight, and he made a strong case there. But I think there's. I think that assuming he continues on the path that he's on, you have to honor Tyreek Hill somehow. Yes. A and so now you're like, okay, well, if Tyreek Hill's winning Offensive Player of the Year, and I think he – I assume he's the favorite. I haven't looked there. but Ian McCaffrey are neck and neck, right. and I disagree with that. Tyreek should be the clear favorite. Tyreek should be. But my point is it's probably going to be one of those two guys. Yep. So then you're like, okay, right? And if Dak loses to Philadelphia, then you probably don't have an argument there. But yep. if Dak beats Philadelphia – my question to you, Jay, is what happens if Brock Purdy goes out and beats Philadelphia this week? Well, that's the great mystery in all this, because Brock Purdy, if you just look at his, statistically, he's the clear MVP, even with Dak's numbers. Like, I read out that Dak was second in a lot of yeah. these stats, like passer rating, EPA. Brock Purdy's first. <laughs> Brock <laughs> Purdy, if Brock Purdy's name was Josh Allen or Joe Burrow, right. he would be the runaway MVP favorite, because it's, uh, Brock Purdy, last pick in the draft, uh, doesn't have a massive arm, uh, he had those bad picks against Shanahan Minnesota. Shanahan robot. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's Shanahan, oh, he's got all these skill right. position players. Like, we need to reassess how how we look at Brock Purdy's supporting cast because Brock Purdy, his offensive line isn't any good outside of Trent right. Williams. The rest of the line is bad. He faces pressure. They have the 28th ranked pass, uh, pass protection grade by PFF. Like he is doing this in spite of his offensive line. His 
skill position players have come in and out, but there is just a barrier with people with Purdy. I think that barrier will go away if he beats Philadelphia this weekend and then beats Baltimore on Monday Night Football in a couple of weeks. But you just never know if people are like, oh, I can't vote for Brock Purdy. Whereas I do feel good about voting for Dak Prescott. So it, it's Dak interesting. Dak Prescott's a, he's a more famous guy. It's a sexier name, if yep. you will. And yes, there is a, you're going to want to honor the Cowboys in some way, yep. shape or form. So I, both guys are really interesting as well. But the, the bringing it back to fantasy here for a second, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know that there's really any takeaways here. The, the two takeaways, I think, C.D. Lamb doing C.D. Lamb things. My guy eights, you know, just continuing to crush here. Uh, but, I mean, I think what's really impressive here is another great game for Brandon Cooks. Since week six, he's, the, he's a top 20 fantasy wide receiver on a fantasy points per game basis, right? He's averaging almost 15 fantasy points per game since week six. This is Brandon Cooks. He scored in five of the seven games so far, at least 16 fantasy points in three of the last four. He's, it, it's clearly, it's, it's, this offense is rolling so well and it's clearly, it's Lamb and Cooks. Like Michael Gallup isn't even a thought here as well. And how about Jake Ferguson, who has also scored in four of the pack six games. He leads all tight ends in terms of red zone targets this season. Like he's such a big part when they get in close and they just look for him as well. Anytime he's seen at least four targets a season, he's averaging over 12 fantasy points per game. Jake Ferguson, I think Brandon Cooks and Jake Ferguson are both basically must start. Ferguson's absolutely a must start. Is and Ferguson I think Cooks kind is, of a star at this point? Like he looks the part out there and well, he's jawing with Jamal Adams. Yeah. He just gives them a different element to the offense because it's a weird thing to say, but otherwise the receiving core, it's a little, they're kind of just small. A little bit like C.D. Lamps, like right. massive guys. Cooks is small. And just Ferguson, just with his, his height and his power, he just kind of gives them an extra element that they really need. And Dak Prescott has always loved throwing to his tight end. Correct. And so he's got that connection with Ferguson. He embarrassed Jamal Adams in yeah. that red zone play. Oh, it was, I mean, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. Theater. Yeah. I would have been yeah. terrified. I would have yeah. backed down very quickly from Jamal Adams. After a brutal start to the season, Tony Pollard also continues his run as well. Tony Pollard, anytime touchdown, that cashes, which is nice as well. 23 touches, which were the most in a game since week three. Um, we thought Rico Dattle would get there. Saw a little bit of Rico Dattle, but not enough as well. So uh, it's a tough upcoming schedule for Pollard, but you certainly feel a lot better about him than you did a month ago. You do feel better about the usage, but I don't know about you, Connor. He just doesn't look right to me. He's not making guys miss. He's getting like one tackle and down. He's, He's getting a nice more downhill run runner this year, and then that outside explosiveness. Yeah, it's. I, I agree, Jay. I think that the usage will carry you. Like, there's only yep. so many running backs that are in a good offense like this that get this usage. But it definitely feels like you have to question the workload a little bit. And He well, dropped the touchdown pass as well that was right there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But they are starting to – but the fact that he got that look is great. Yep. And he, he yep. did catch three balls. So the fact that he's actually starting to get more involved in the passing game, which is weirdly didn't feel like they were using no. him that much uh, early in the season. But to your point, like, he's gotten 23 goal-to-go carries this season. He scored on three of them. Like, yeah. that's bad. <laughs> three for 23 is bad, right? He's scored his, his, 13%. Like is his rate, so you're right. Again, I'm I'm just saying like he was brutal. Yeah. I mean, listen, you're past the you're past the trade deadline in most leagues as well. I just after he was fantasy wise, he was bad at the start of the season. He's at least starting to turn this into production as well. I don't think he's going to be the top five guy you drafted him in as, but he's absolutely a usable starter, and hopefully volume continues to get him there. But I I agree with you. I don't know if it's the extra weight or it's the off the injury or just he isn't built to be this guy without Zeke there taking a lot of the workload, but I, it has not been the year we all expected for Tony Pollard. But still, you're happy with 17.3 fantasy points today. Our final running back note and final note from this game, Zach Charbonnet, 19 carries, 60 yards. He gets the touchdown. At, towards the end of the game, he has that 39-yard reception, and then he leaves with the knee injury. It's being reported as a bruise right now, which I think is the best news on this we could yeah. have gotten rather than any kind of tears. But Charbonnet looked powerful and extremely effective for the most part before leaving this game, guys. Obviously, he got stopped on the fourth down, but that was a brutal play call, by the way, by Seattle. Tough play calls on fourth down I mean, for Seattle. I mean, just run Charbonnet right into the, the Dallas front. But yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. With Kenneth Walker down, I mean, Charbonnet is going to get a lot of right. work, and, and we'll see how that is going forward, unless it's DJ Dallas now. Ten days until they face the 49ers, so hopefully Charbonnet gets healthy, and maybe hopefully Ken Walker does as well, and so we'll break this out. Yes, I was annoyed with that 39-yard reception because my, uh, my, my, my bet yesterday was the under on 74 and a half yards from scrimmage, and it was looking good yeah. up until that 39-yard reception, and then there you go. So in addition to, you know, Gino going off and 
Charbonnet, Charbonnet going off and getting into the end zone. Like, anyway, just not a great bad, night for bad unders. day at the office yeah. for uh, your old boy Matty here. Yeah, yeah, not a good night for unders in the uh, what was it the fifth game ever where a team didn't punt. Uh, yeah, right. It was a Sunday night game that migrated its way to Thursday night somehow. Uh, it was good. unbelievable. Like every over hit, yep. every over hit. Like, I appreciated that. Al Michaels, since he couldn't be mad at the actual football game for once, just scorched earth the refs. <laughs> yes, yes. He, he there told were a lot of flags. Justifiably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah, yeah. There was a Clayton game. Yeah. I mean, what do you expect? A lot of flags. It was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was brutal. I, I just got an alert. They just called two more penalties in that <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, right yeah. You're going to adjust it? <laughs> yeah. That makes probably. sense. Take some yards away yeah. from someone. Probably. All right, let's take a look at the injuries we're tracking going sure. into the weekend. <laughs> we got two full screens here for you. It's been that kind of week. Keenan Allen did not practice. Rashid Shahid. Did not practice. Same with DTR with concussion. We are heading towards a Joe Flacco real football game in 2023, <laughs> folks. Yes. Dalton Schultz with the hamstring didn't practice. Sorry, Jay. Pop Douglas uh. in concussion protocol. He didn't practice. Uh, here's two big ones. And people have been watching Aaron Jones this yeah. week. He still hasn't practiced. Jaden Reed with a chest injury. He didn't practice. Our last DMP, Hollywood Brown with the heel. But back to Aaron Jones. A.J. Dillon has been limited with the sure. groin. Tyreek Hill's just he, – he's – That's going to be fine. He's going to be I'm fine. Not, I'm not worried about Keenan Allen just yet as well. But the, Schultz, Aaron Jones, Jaden Reader, those are the ones that sort of pop up. Uh, just before we went on air, Jonathan Gannon saying the expectation is that Marquise Brown is going to play. Okay. They've been, they've been working on him. But, they, um, but you know, trending towards playing Hollywood Brown and Trey McBride as well. Who you see there, he was limited with a groin yesterday. Chris Olave is the interesting one to me because we all thought that he just kind of wouldn't play because he got concussed and he dealt with concussion last year. But he's gotten two limited practices in. So, and also in a game that they really need to win against Detroit, I wonder if uh, he's able to get through concussion protocol and play. Yeah. And while we've been recording, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network is saying Devon A. Chan, who is on the screen in front of you with the knee injury, he's expected to return. So a lot of limited tier. Moster, Trey McBride, Amari Cooper, Kareem Hunt, Tank Dell. Talked about Olave. We talked about A. Chan. Noah Brown, A.J. Brown, and T. Higgins all limited, but a lot of these guys starting to trend in the right direction. We'll see what happens with them on Friday's yeah. practices. And, of course, Higgins plays the Monday night game. So, in right. essence, you know, when you see a Thursday practice, it's, it's really Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, we'll see more about Higgins today and Saturday, but it'd be nice to get him back for that Monday night game. So, we'll see. A couple more notes. Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson. He said Travis Etienne is day to day with a chest injury. Aaron Rodgers was not spotted Thursday after he was limited in practice on Wednesday. Uh, ESPN's Rich Samini reports Rodgers is not close to being game ready. Now, while Rodgers was throwing Wednesday and not spotted at practice Thursday, he was spotted with the season ticket uh, employees making calls and selling tickets and giving away tickets. So from really? Wednesday, where he was throwing This is him practice, on Thursday. This went, is, I'm sorry, this is him on Wednesday. Yep. Look at him in the red jersey. Yep. He's throwing. Nice tight spiral. <laughs> yeah, very tight Looking spiral. Good. By the way, this this has not been slowed down. This is uh, <laughs> no, this is <laughs> yeah. this is uh, yeah. this is real time. Yeah, yeah. Deron Bland is yeah. just dying somewhere to jump this <laughs> yeah. ball or yeah. have yeah. it go over his head. We don't know which yet. Flip a coin. Thing. And then right. here is Thursday where wow. Rodgers. This after, one is in slow mo this time. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, this one is in slow mo. But on Thursday, like we said, he was making calls to people in need of tickets or season ticket holders. Um, working you live in the city now, what part? Have you, have you been to any games this year yet? Is that the only one? So you're one and oh going to games. Obviously, we need to find a way to get you back. How do we do that? Do we have to offer you some free tickets or what? I don't know if I'm authorized to do that just yet. <laughs> How many need for this week? I got a, I can get them a couple tickets. I got a couple extras. I'll get you two tickets. How's that? There you go. There's uh, there's Aaron Rodgers begging people to come to the Jets games yeah. as well. It's that's very similar. It's we don't ever put a camera in it, but it's very similar to what we do with Denny Carter asking people to tune into the show. Poor Denny, you know, like every morning has to do like an hour of calls. Just you know, hey, yes. we're coming up on Peacock. We're on Peacock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you so, know, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or you know, you listen to Sirius XM Channel 85 or watch on YouTube. At yeah, 5 well, you watch it on YouTube later, or um, yeah. you know, wherever you get your podcasts, whatever. Two men who hate the spotlight. Yes. Danny Carter and Aaron Rodgers. Right. Kind of correct. They just can't get enough of it. Is, uh, factually correct. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers isn't playing this year. It's not happening. No, He's I not so it can you t I wish we could bet on that. Can well, you? You can. You can bet on DeMar Hamlin to win Comeback Player of the Year. Right. Because well, Rodgers is the only guy who's going to beat him, and Rodgers isn't going to play. Yeah. So, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is factually correct. Can you win it in the same season? I don't know. Also, even Doesn't if he, he does, feel like a candidate next year? Also, if, even if he did yes. come back, and he's not coming back, but if he did, it's like, all right, well, Aaron, you're limping around on a 
five and nine team as an ego trip. Like that's not going to beat. That's not going right. to. Right. Just to beat up on the commanders. Yeah. No. Like, right. The, yeah, exactly. That's right. uh, it, not better than coming back from the dead. The dead. Yes. yes. Right. Only two people have come back from the dead, Matthew, and we're still talking about the other guy two thousand years later. So I reckon Demar Hamlin might win Comeback Player of the Year. I see what you did there. Our last note here: the Cardinals wave tight end Zach Ertz. You know, hoping he can catch on. Uh, with a contender, so it remains the Trey McBride show for the Cardinals. This was broken by J.J. Watt, by the way. I want to give him some love <laughs> yeah. for the insider report. He he uh, outscooped the guys that the, do it full time. The, the scoopers. Yes, tough yeah. scene for them. Yeah, tough scene for them. J.J. Exactly. Watt. Just, yeah, you know. sources. Sources right. say probably Zach Ertz himself. Probably the Zach texted J.J. Watt and said, I'm, right. "I asked he, for my release, and they're going to give it to me, so well, I can catch on." Somewhere. Like again, like we don't know about the injury, but Ertz was productive prior to being uh, released by the Cardinals as well. Could a reunion in Philadelphia make sense? Like, I mean, you know, be it really interesting. I'm trying to think who ne- who needs a tight end that's like a you know that's a real contender. Baltimore Ravens. Oh, the Baltimore Ravens oh, could be Mark interesting. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they have Isaiah Is likely. He better than like Isaiah him? likely right now. A serious question. I'm not even being a jerk. Yeah. Uh, possibly. It's worth finding out. Why not? Just get another guy in the room. Yeah. Yeah, uh, also, insurance in case Isaiah likely gets hurt. I mean, if you're Miami, who's getting nothing out of Durham Smythe, do you say Miami? Like, Miami's a fun one. Right. You know. I mean, like again, like. We don't need you to be fast, yeah. but give two of somebody to look at in the red zone? I don't know. Honestly, the Chiefs should just run two tight end sets with Ertz and Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Because now you're talking. <laughs> nobody else in that offense really Ertz matters. Ertz can catch. Ertz yeah, can catch. catch. Ertz can catch. Mahomes might be back in the MVP combo <laughs> yeah. after a couple of games with Ertz. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's um, we'll that's interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, you know what time it is, yeah. guys. Oh, is it Denny time? It's Denny, Denny O'Clock. It is Denny, Denny time. It is Denny time. Denny, Denny time. Carter Denny. is joining us for the regression files. Put down the headset. Files. Stop begging people to watch the <laughs> wow, show. Now you're going to be on our show. I'm working it, man. Jay-Z looks good today, Denny. Yes, Denny, you look very comfortable. I feel like a, a hot cup of tea is in front of you somewhere. Yeah, I have a sm- my smoking jacket on. Yes. You know, it's December. You know, you waited all fall for me to wear my sweater, Matthew. I... <laughs> I am wearing it. It's making me feel better after I benched all my Seahawks per your advice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Right wow. Side. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> you, get, <laughs> you get nothing. Listen, you get well, nothing. Look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Denny. First off, specific to you, <laughs> it's for Deontay Johnson. Um, so it was re- everyone else I apologize to, but for you, serves you right. Good. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. You got me. Yeah, I did. Ha <laughs> ha. Take that. <laughs> Denny Denny. joins us for the regression files. Players who are overproducing or underproducing based on their workload, playing time, opportunity. Of course, you could read the regression files on NBCSports.com. Denny, let's start with a negative pick going into the weekend. Who do you got for us? I I hate to do this, and by hate, I I actually do love to do this. Uh, I'm going to throw some cold water on the Rasheed Rice hype train that has taken off after his big outing against the Raiders, 107 yards uh, and a touchdown. Look, uh, you know, McCall Hardman was out. Kadarius Tony was out. Uh, Jarek McKinnon was out. They didn't really have a choice. Sky Moore is struggling with a knee injury. Okay, so he was seen on the sideline with a knee wrap. So Rasheed Rice was the only game in town besides Travis Kelsey, and Rasheed Rice still only ran two thirds of the routes for for Kansas City until until that gets to like 80, 90 percent. I'm not in on Rasheed Rice as like an every week wide receiver too now are you starting him with all the bye weeks this horrible horrible bye week situation this week are you starting him in 12 team leagues yes yes you are i just i'm just saying that he's not going to be targeted on 45 percent of his routes like he was last week that's just not happening matthew you agree yeah i buy that look i mean i'm at wide receiver 24 even in a week in which there are six teams on a bye and even after you've taken out all the guys from the thursday night game as well so yeah i mean i have him as a wide receiver three he's a He's a high upside, but certainly there is some risk with Rasheed Rice. I like the talent. I guess my take is is that if somebody is going to emerge as a go-to wide receiver for Patrick Mahomes, I like Rasheed Rice the best of the lot. Like I probably Rice, then Justin Watson, and then you get down to like, oh, good Lord. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't disagree with, uh, with Denny's take. Uh, by the way, a very festive Denny Carter. Did you yes. notice the tinsel yeah. behind him? Yes. Very festive. Looks like so he's much. My my wife brought out all the Christmas stuff, and I am I'm decked out for a whole month. I mean, it's December first. I'm gonna have this stuff up for four weeks. Yeah, your yeah. halls are decked. There's a lot going on in this visual of Denny. It's like he's about to give a lecture about Methuselah, but have it be Christmas themed. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> yeah. It's all Welcome very to Denny's good. TED Talk. Uh, on Rashi Rice, I think his problem is that he's just not a very refined route runner. Mm. But I think yeah. the, the way they used him 
against the Raiders, just kind of more almost as a gadget player in some ways, just getting it to him in space, letting him use his athleticism and speed take over. Uh, hopefully they can do that going forward. Uh, Danny, I was devastated to see my son, uh, Pat Frymuth, uh, on the negative regression side of your article after he broke out now that he's been freed from the reign of Mac Canada, but uh, you weren't impressed with his route participation rates. Yeah, I mean, yes. It, and this is a whole like process nerdy thing. And you guys know this, like if a guy's not out there running a lot of routes and, and getting by, getting away with it, you might say, like Firemuth did last week against the Bengals, it just makes you a little bit hesitant to go in. Now, 12 team leagues, you're probably starting the Muth, okay? And and it's important, by the way, we talked about this on the Roto World Football Show on Thursday. Folks want to check that out. Uh, uh, the, the, the MOF, the MOF middle of the field, is now being explored by the Steelers now that Matt Canada uh, is, is out of the picture. And that's huge for a guy like Pat Fryermuth who runs his routes in that area. Uh, but again, he's just not out there running a, a, a ton of routes. The Cardinals are a pretty good matchup. I just want to pump the brakes a little bit on Fryermuth as like an elite play. Muth loves the moff is what Denny is yes, saying. There you go. By the way, in Australia, we actually say root, not route, but I'm going to say route for everyone. Uh, you're already I becoming more that. American I like Denny doing this to indicate the middle <laughs> yeah. of the field. It's like, I don't know, he was like get <laughs> stirring like, something. Get I got right? it very he's, clearly he's, the message right, that meant middle of the field. He's churning butter yeah. over there is what uh, the Denny's here. doing. Yeah, there yes. you go. There you go. Much better. Um, I, I am at tight end six this week, I, again, with all the guys on by, and I like the matchup against Arizona as well. So, tight end is such a wasteland I understand what you're saying I don't know that I would say he's an elite tight end I don't think he's in the he's not in the uh the the Kelsey Kittle Hawkinson range but Laporta but do I think he's but do I think he's very viable do I think if you grabbed him off the waiver wire or you've been holding on to him do you have a starting tight end in fantasy the rest of the way I do so that's what I would I would say and certainly this week I'm as a top 10 play it's tight end six for me are you are you starting him over Taysom Matthew He's right there. I mean, Taysom yeah. drives me crazy. Like, Taysom shouldn't <laughs> that even That actually like, really bothered you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, probably not. Yeah, he probably doesn't have as much touchdown upside as Taysom Hill. But he's like, he's right there. Like, Taysom and, yeah. and Friermuth are sort of right there in that kind of 6-7 range. If Alave is out, I think I'd go Taysom. I think that I, I think that's I think that's fair. Um, I don't have an issue with that, uh, that particular yeah. call. So, Denny, how about a more positive regression choice for this weekend? It sounds a little funny after he had a big game on Thanksgiving, but I think Christian Watson still has some positive regression coming his way. Uh, he's a guy who has been running really cold, like per every receiving metric this season. And part of that is because Jordan Love uh, had been so bad on deep throws, right? On even, especially to the middle of the field, the off again. Uh, and Christian Watson is going to benefit from his from Jordan Love's improved downfield throwing, which we've seen over the past two weeks. Uh, I think he'll continue to do that. Does he have a, a floor, a fantasy floor? I don't. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, we're we're talking about a guy who is a wide receiver three, kind of a boom bust guy. But the amount of air yards he's seeing, he saw 50% of the team's air yards on Thanksgiving against Detroit. That's that's enormous. If he can keep up that sort of receiving profile, he does have crazy upside going forward and I, I do think this week uh, the Packers will be forced to throw quite a bit against Kansas City. Matthew how about a positive pick for you? Uh, I'll go with Terry McLaurin. I noticed uh, you, you mentioned my guy Scary Terry in the uh, in your column there Denny. I appreciate that as well. Look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. since week three McLaurin has scored one touchdown on 87 targets one touchdown. So there's got to be some positive touchdown regression coming for a receiver that is this talented on a team that continues to throw the way they do 38% of the team's air yards over the last three weeks for McLaurin. Second place on the team is Jahan Dotson with 14%. So they're taking shots to him deep. They're trying to involve him. It just hasn't happened yet, but he's too talented. They throw too much. They're playing the, um, they're playing the Dolphins here. I don't think he, they'll move him around so that he won't see a ton of Ramsey as well. He's actually been fairly matchup proof throughout his career as well. He's just, he's, He's too good of a wide receiver, and this offense throws too often for him to be. And I, I don't want to say this bad because he's been he's been fine, but yep. he just hasn't been great. Especially when you think about how much this offense throws. You know, with with Sam Howell, one of the league leaders in passing yards, you'd be like, well, should McLaurin have been up higher? And you're seeing like, why is Jamison Crowder <laughs> catching the ball? What, what's Diami Brown and Byron <laughs> Pringle doing out there? So anyway, I, I'm just I believe positive regression is coming 
for Terry McLaurin. Number 17 you got, you got, is number one in your heart. Right, exactly. And, and you, you got to believe that even though McLaurin's receiving profile is a little down this year as far as like uh, his his target commanding skills, yes, pun intended, uh, it, you know, those things are down. But you got to believe that Miami's going to have a big lead here. I mean, that Dolphins offense is going to destroy Washington. Sorry, Matthew. Uh, and, and, that, no. and that will lead to a ton of passing volume, I think, for the commanders. No doubt. Good pun, Denny. I like the pun. Yeah. Very good. Yep. Denny, always a pleasure. Uh, really appreciate you bringing the Christmas Thanks, spirit to the show today. Keep doing that every Friday, I, and we will talk absolutely. to you next week as well. Yeah. Get back in that Thanks, phone fellas. booth. Start getting uh, some more viewers for us. <laughs> Pull your Aaron Rodgers. There you See go. You, Thank you very much, Denny. You can Good catch job. Denny for his live fantasy football Q&A right after happy hour, 1 p.m. Eastern time on the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. We're taking our first break. When we're back, we're going up to the Bud Light Bar. What's on tap for the weekend with the matchups at the highest point totals right after this. Sunday night, Patrick Mahomes plays at Lambeau for the first time when the Chiefs battle the Packers. Sunday, 7 Eastern, of course, on NBC and Peacock. What's on Tap is brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Nothing is as easy to enjoy as Sunday full of football and a fridge full of beer, but these are the games we're locking in on. They got the highest point totals going into the weekend. And guys, we will start right there with the Dolphins traveling to play the Commanders. The over-under is 49 and a half in this game. Miami obviously favored by nine and a half points. So as we got the news at the top of the show, Matthew, that it sounds like Devon A. Chan will play, do you just throw him right back in your lineup or is this a wait and see with him? I don't think you're going to have a choice there. You see it there on my screen in terms of, you know, how and two are both top 10 plays there. And so you can check out my ranks on, if you're uh, just listening, check out my ranks on rotoworld.com for free in terms of this. But most of the guys, I think most of the obvious guys in this game, I think you're starting. We expect a ton of points here. I'm a chan at running back 21 just and like as we're getting positive reports to your point NFL Network reporting this morning uh, I hadn't updated my ranking I updated my rankings last night after the game but prior to the, that news that a chan uh, is definitely playing and so the t running back 21 was a little bit of a hedge because but I'll probably move him up there yeah I just think the upside on a chan in a high scoring game I just don't know how you bench him especially in a week with six teams on a bye I, since week nine Commanders give up the third most fantasy points to opposing running backs. They've allowed at least 90 rushing yards to running backs in three of the last four games again since week nine. And so Achan, who's seen at least, who's had at least 21 fantasy points in every game that he's gotten 10 touches or more, it just feels like he's just too big upside and they're going to want to get him going. I think so. And he's probably the one guy in the league where he can get nine touches and you can feel okay about what he's going to do with them. So with the matchup, uh, which is not very imposing, uh, I think that with all those teams on a bye, you're probably going to have to start HM. And I get the, under the hesitation because eh, the last time I started him, he played like one snap and then he came out again. He's going to get, he gets hurt right. again. Like, and I get that. I just, they're not going to risk him if they, it's welcome to football. I mean, you know what I mean? Like welcome to fantasy football. Like any player is, could get hurt on any play. Like, I think you just, if you got HN, I think you're rolling with him. And let's not overlook, Mostert's battling some things, too. Yeah, sure. Mostert hasn't been full go at practices week after week, so they're yep. going to have to split this up no matter what between these guys. think it's going to be a three-headed monster? Right. That's Wilson, kind of why, is it Jeff yeah. Wilson now getting a 30% or more of that pie, I think is the real question, too. Yep. Uh, the positives are is that the commanders are so bad that they all should be actually <laughs> fine. And then maybe then on Monday we'll be able to say, like, okay, now we know, sort of know what this backfield looks like. Jay, you think this lives up to the shootout expectations it has? Because there is some risk here that it's just a, a blowout and kind of turns into a clock grinding game instead. 49 and a half's a lot. I think that the Miami passing game is just so explosive and that the Washington Commanders defense since losing Sweat, it was already bad and now they've lost Sweat and Chase Young off that pass. Like they, they're just drawing dead. They've just got absolutely no hope of containing a team like Miami. Uh, so I think that Miami are going to score at will through the air and I think that Hal is good enough to be able to play from behind and put up points himself. So I do expect that this will be very high scoring. You know, by the way, um, and this is the first game that they'll have without Jack Del Rio, their defensive coordinator, who they let go of uh, after the Thanksgiving game. But by the way, Ron Rivera is coaching the defense. Like he's calling the plays. I don't, when was the last time Ron Rivera actually called defensive plays? It's been a long time. Let so, him cook. I'm, right? Let Ron cook. I mean, I'm, <laughs> He's got we'll one see. more. I'm just set a fire and burn the house down. <laughs> we'll, 
we'll see, but I I don't know how well this is going to go. To be perfectly <laughs> probably honest, probably not well. So, because also, if you could choose one game to not make your return, it'll probably be this right. one against, right. against Mike, Tyreek, McDaniel, Mike McDaniel, who's had extra time because they played the yeah. Friday game, so he's had extra time. Yeah. To Forget about for this additional game. rest as well on top of all these elements. Yeah, the commanders might be in this, trouble. This is uh, <laughs> this is dicey. <laughs> but to answer your question, Connor, I lose. do because I will say, for as bad as the defense has been. The offense has moved the ball, despite yeah. the fact that it's a bad offensive yeah. line, despite the fact they've constantly been in negative game scripts, and you sort of know what's coming and that they're going to be pass happy. Like, give Sam Howell credit. Give Eric the enemy credit. They have moved the ball. They've involved a bunch of different players. And so, yes, I think it'll be junk time. I think, I think the Dolphins win. I think they cover. But I do think the commanders will move the ball and 49 and a half. I think the over hits. Yep. Sam Howell is kind of setting up to be the match Schaub of his era. Feels yeah. like it, doesn't it? Mm. Probably not quite the guy, but yeah. moves the ball. Nah, I, I like Matt, Sam Howell. He's okay. a future Hall of Famer. People like Matt Schaub. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. Our next one here, Niners, three points favorites against the Eagles. The over-under pretty similar in this one, 48 points. And, Jay, obviously we have a lot of top fantasy players in this one. Any concern for DeAndre Swift against that 49ers front? Uh, a little bit of concern about his efficiency. Eric Armstead has been on the injury report, but it looks like he is going to play. So the Niners are at full health. They're fully rested. They've surely been thinking about this game since January of last season. But I just think that the Eagles, with their skill position players, with Goddard out, and Goddard is actually practicing today, but I would expect he's probably still not going to play because he hasn't gotten a full practice in yet since his injury. This Philadelphia offense is just so concentrated to three guys. We talked about this yesterday. It's Devontae, uh, it's Smith, Swift, and AJ Brown. And so I think that all those guys are just going to get there through volume. Swift, maybe he's not efficient on the ground, but I think he'll add work in the passing game too. Well, but my concern is, is that he just hasn't been used in the passing game nearly yeah. uh, as much recently, right? Single digit target share in three of the past four games. It's a brutal matchup against the Niners. Last four weeks, they allow the second fewest fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. And in fact, every running back they faced in that stretch has been held to under 60 total yards. And that includes Zach Charbonnet, Rashad White, Travis Etienne. So not exactly like, you know, bad running backs. I mean, you know, White's not super efficient, but he's gotten there. I think what you're hoping for is that Swift falls into the end zone. He's had at least one goal to go carry now in four straight games. And so I'm nervous about him. But for our purposes, I don't know that there's anything you can do about it. I'm at running back 11. Yeah. Because because of his offense and the we're in a six teams on a bye week, you have to start him. Yeah, and people also, it's gone a bit too far with the Eagles. Like, the Eagles are really freaking good. And yes. he's the number one lead running back behind that offensive line with Jalen Hurts as his quarterback. you just got to start him every week. All right, our final one here, Broncos at Texans. Yes, the Broncos at Texans, a high point total, 47 and a half. It's been go. Uh, better sledding for the Broncos offense recently. We know what C.J. Stroud and that offense can do as well. And Matthew, is Samaj P. Ryan actually gaining a bigger role in this backfield like we thought in the preseason that never truly came to light? Or is there some things going on here that are a bit of a fluke? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. So, listen, the positives are that he had seven rushes last week, which was a season high, and, you know, you, they use him in the passing game as well. But, like, I don't think – if you look at the last two games, like, two weeks ago, like, a lot of his usage uh, against Minnesota came on that last drive, like, where they were just – you know, they were in the two-minute drill and they were hustling up as well. Um, uh, you know, and then last week he got the touchdown. Okay, fine. But his last game with more than eight touches was week five. Jaleel, I, I feel like on the depth chart, he's past Jaleel McLaughlin, right? It's, it's Javante Williams, Samaj P. Ryan, Jaleel McLaughlin is how I think that. But he's still clearly behind Javante Williams. I'm at running back 30. In a week in which six teams are on by, I'm at running back 30. I think it's just, I know you see the box score and you're like, oh, 13 points back to back, he could be usable, but like, he was out there in a lot of my leagues this week, and I didn't put a bid on him. Yeah, he's extremely game script dependent. He's going to need the Broncos to be down, to be throwing constantly. Otherwise, I just don't see the upside for him. Javante is clearly the guy in this backfield. And they like McLaughlin and Williams in the passing game as well. Again, yeah. so it's just like he got bailed out by one big drive and then a touchdown last week. So my running back 30, I'm fine. Like if you're desperate in a, in a game in which we expect the Broncos to pass a lot, he could be semi-usable like as an RB3, but not – not not feeling the the you know the same hype that we saw in the preseason no i think it's a little fluky that'll do it for what's on tap presented by bud light easy to sunday easy to enjoy we're taking our last break when we're back last call jay and i got pickup lines for matthew oh yeah 
Don't forget on DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code BERRY when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. We'll close out the week here with some pickup lines for Matthew as you take a look at the matchups with the highest spreads. Jay, what do you got for Mr. Barry over here? Yeah, what, what do you got for me? What better way to woo you, Matthew, <laughs> than with uh, Tim Boyle. Yes. Tim A, yes. as he's known. We yes. continue the South Park theme of uh, this week. Tim Boyle under 179 and a half passing yards. What a great way to lead into the weekend. Look, the total in this game is 33 and a half. Right. Which is not great, uh, Jets Falcons. So not going to be a lot is of yards. Is that the lowest in NFL history? Uh, it's, uh, I think uh, when uh, who was the wide receiver on Denver who played quarterback? Oh, against the oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Kendall Hinton. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's the one. Kendall Hinton. Yeah, I think that was the lowest. But yeah, okay. this is pretty low. Where did he low. rank on your quarterback rankings that week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think like 27 or something. Because he had some rushing ups. Right. Yeah, yeah, he did have rushing ups. Yeah. Didn't really maximize it. Yeah. I don't think Tim Boyle was going to maximize his passing upside in this one. So here is my angle here. 179 and a half. He needed to throw the ball 38 times last week to get to 179 so he didn't even go over and I think a lot of the game script that would see him go over this I don't think he's there for the second half of the game right. because either they're winning and then they're running the ball or they're losing in which case I think Tim Boyle has a huge chance to get benched also he got sacked seven times last week behind the worst offensive line of football it's also an injury risk I think there's just a lot of things that play into Tim Boyle not going uh, over 179 and a half. I don't think there's one I could cook up that's better than Jay's after all that. Yeah. As somebody who watches a lot of Jets football, <laughs> I tend to agree. All right, here you go, Matthew. I'll Bre tell you this. For somebody, because you have to watch. It's your job. <laughs> it is absolutely. It's right. a real. They don't pay you enough. I don't I, know what you make, <laughs> it's not enough. but they don't pay you. Whatever it is you make, it's not enough. Yeah, it's something to think about. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> letting you know. SNY, give this man a raise. Yeah, I couldn't get the Emmy, but I took yeah. a raise. Yeah, exactly. You should have right. won the Emmy just for that. Yeah. Right. That should have been it literally keep your, Emmy, high. your Emmy role, your Emmy submission reel should have been like you this. Yep. Just yep. you video of you watching watching the Jets. Bump right, him up to got? five mil from four. Come yep. on, SNY. Yep. How about Brandon Ayuk over 62 and a half receiving yards? This is all I need to give you on this one. Philly, bottom three defense and explosive pass rate. Uh, San Francisco, top three offense and explosive pass yep. rate. This is a We've talked about it all week. This is a great matchup for Brock Purdy. I think it's the best matchup for Brandon Ayuk. I, I love that. I think it also could be a big Kittle game. There might be some rain here. You could see a uh, turnover. So I'm going. I'm going with Tim Boyle. Yes. Tim yes. A. It's Come like home betting with me under and on a Jets bet I'm going is kind of like I'm taking you home, <laughs> yeah. Jay. Come on. Yes, we'll bring Sorry. Timmy with us. <laughs> Sorry, Denny. Sorry, Connor. I said it's closing time. You have to go home, relieved. but you can't stay here for Connor, for Jay, for Denny, and Kira. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.